Since the opening of our plant in 1966, the goal of Portsmouth GE people has always been to build the highest quality television receivers at the lowest possible cost. That singular goal has been with us for more than 18 years and has sustained us through both good and bad times. Today, as employees of GE's video and audio business operations, we all can be proud of the many accomplishments our business has had over the years. We introduced the first Portacolor TV receivers in 1967. We became the headquarters for General Electric's TV business in 1970. The VIR color control system was introduced in 1976 and won an Emmy the following year. The industry's first rear projection TV set, the widescreen 1000, was introduced in 1978, as was the VIR2. More recently, we've added stereo sound and sound plus to several of our models, and the NeoVision picture tube system we introduced last year has proven so successful that we've included it throughout both our command performance and performance plus lines. In 1984, GE's video and audio businesses merged to become the $1.2 billion video and audio business operations, headquartered here. Meeting these challenges has always required cooperation and teamwork, and the future of our business continues to rest on the combined efforts of everyone. We all must work together to improve quality and reduce costs. We must continue to look for ways to improve and seek changes that will help us do our jobs better. And that's why our business is adopting a new program that recognizes good performance and takes positive steps to correct performance problems. The program is called Positive Discipline. Positive discipline will help us improve working relationships between supervisors and hourly paid employees. It's a method of solving work performance, attendance, and personal behavior problems, rather than punishing the individuals who have the problems. The focus between the employee and his or her supervisor is on what the individual can do to ensure a problem doesn't happen again. And because the emphasis is on correction rather than punishing, positive discipline will help the employee to commit to doing a good job and following work rules. And that is what is meant by a positive approach. And the procedures of positive discipline emphasize consistency and fairness. The philosophy simply is a commitment between each employee and the business to build a productive relationship based on mutual respect, cooperation, fair treatment, ethical practices, and loyalty. Most Portsmouth GE employees made this commitment when they joined GE and have lived up to it ever since. Their performances were consistent over time and sometimes were over and above the call of duty. Recognizing this good performance is a key part of positive discipline. The system encourages supervisors to acknowledge good performance, either by telling the employee directly or by putting a complimentary note in the employee's file. But there are times when the individual does not perform at the expected acceptable level. The problem might be showing up late for work or not following safety guidelines or not meeting work performance goals. In dealing with these problems, positive discipline emphasizes the supervisor's role in coaching and counseling the individual to help identify the problem and work with the employee to solve it. Finding solutions rather than affixing punishment is the heart of the positive discipline process. Positive discipline has a formal three-step process for solving problems. The oral reminder, the written reminder, and the decision-making leave. The oral reminder is a private conversation between the supervisor and the employee. During the meeting, the performance problem is defined, along with expected behavior. 
Methods for solving the problem are discussed, and the employee makes a commitment to change. The oral reminder is a problem-solving session and generally occurs after informal conversations have failed to correct the problem. The oral reminder is as far as most discipline problems will ever go. But if the commitment isn't met, the process moves to the written reminder. The supervisor and the employee meet to discuss why the performance objective agreed upon in the oral reminder hasn't been met. After this meeting, the supervisor summarizes the conversation in a written reminder, and a copy is given to the employee. The reminder remains active in the employee's file for nine months. If, after these steps, the problem still exists, the positive discipline process moves to the third and final step, the decision-making leave. The supervisor and employee meet again to discuss the situation. After the conversation, the employee is given the following workday off with pay to consider his or her future with General Electric. This will be one of the most important days in the employee's career. During the one day, the employee must reach a final decision about his or her desire to work at GE Portsmouth. There are two possible outcomes to decision-making leave. Some employees will decide to end their careers with GE, but most employees will decide to stay. And when an employee returns to work, he is committed to changing his behavior. Very few employees will ever reach this final positive discipline step. But when decision-making leave is reached, it is the employee's option to return to work or if the employee decides not to make a commitment, to be terminated. The decision-making leave is active for 12 months. Any performance problem that occurs during this active period can result in immediate dismissal. Of course, our existing procedures for appeal remain in place. Why are we adopting this program at GE Portsmouth? Because it will help us improve the way we handle problems and foster closer relationships between supervisors and employees. As supervisors are trained to work more effectively with employees, treatment of GE people will be fairer and more consistent. Everyone will be working as active members of a single team. Positive discipline adds a new dimension to our business's ability to recognize good performance and at the same time helps those employees with performance problems take charge of those problems and solve them in a manner that is beneficial for everyone. Positive discipline. It's a system designed to recognize good performance while it also challenges us to take more responsibility for our jobs. It's just another way to make General Electric a better place to work.